Hey everyone, I'm King. Welcome back to King Spade channel. So the video that you have been waiting for is finally here. I apologize for making you wait. I just got back home after celebrating Christmas and New Year for a few days at somewhere on the beach beside the ocean and I can finally continue with the video. So without delay, let's get started. Alright, first off, when I'm making this alchemist build video, I wonder where do I start? How can I make it as simple as possible? Possible. How can I make it as easy as possible to understand? Because there are so much to talk about. The alchemist can use three types of weapons, and because of that, there will be three types of builds, three types of gameplays, and three types of skill set that are specifically designed to be used for all three alchemist builds. It's a lot, and it can be overwhelming. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to start with the game recommended start for the alchemist, like usual. From here, you can see what are the game in intent for the alchemist to be played. You can see the general gameplay that is designed for the alchemist in this game. There are three builds as shown here. Potion upgrade, creation and throw. Potion upgrade build is a melee DPS. Creation and throw build is range DPS. Potion upgrade and creation is for PvP and throw is for AFK farming or grinding. For melee DPS, I suppose this will be the build that uses the mass weapon and uses potions to heal or give yourself skill buff to increase physical attack and looks like the mass is for pvp next the creation build have a different picture than the other two builds and if you can see at the background this looks like the heavy cannon so this range dps pvp build will be using the card and cannon to deal attack i think this will be using one handed axe and shield because shield give you more hp and thus preferable to be used in pvp and lastly range dps afk build for pve is that here good at dealing damage by throwing item so I suppose this build use skills like demonstration and acid terror and I guess this will be the two-handed axe weapon build all three builds benefit from the start attribute vit and int is this right I am pretty sure that this is not vit or vit but it should be strength and int we're going to look more into this when we go through the skills so from this information it looks like the mass and the one-handed axe weapon is more to pvp and two-handed axe is is mostly efficient for PvE. This is what the game wants the alchemist to be played. But you and I know there are not just these three types of gameplays. You can play however you want for every job class according to your player style. Now that we have the general idea for the alchemist build, next let's dive in further. Let's look at what each of the builds specialize in. Now for this video, I'm going to make it a little different. I'm not going to look at the skills yet to know what gameplay or play style that each build will specialize in in later in the game, what better place to look at other than the shadow equipment? It will be pretty obvious for the alchemist job class. The alchemist job class playstyle more or less is predetermined depending on the skills that are set in the shadow equipment. Let me show you. The alchemist job class have three types of shadow equipment with each one using different types of weapons. One handed axe with shield, mass and two handed axe. Let's look at the mass weapon first. I'm going to just quickly look it through. I'm not going to go in detail and read every single one of the skills all right the mass shadow equipment gives strength int crit attack speed and crit damage bonus so we know that the mass is a crit build on bound we have battle will this increase your physical damage bonus and impulsive slash this increases the skill trigger rate and damage on engrave we have gene update this increase the final physical damage reduction and blood sucker this increase the lifesteal of the blood sucker skill on validation we have illusion doping this increase damage to the surrounding targets and demonic potion increase the skill buff by 3% on contract we have anesthetic negate 50% damage when HP is reduced by 95% in single attack pen killer increase PvP physical and magic damage reduction for every 10% HP lost spike tone inflict wounded status which reduce healing effect and war axe inflict bleed status to the target which deal extra physical damage every seconds. Now this is what makes the players confused. Alchemist skill will have this INT damage multiplier for almost all of their skills. The alchemist is from the merchant job branch so the main stat attribute is still strength. So with this damage description, will the alchemist benefit more from INT or the strength stat? 
I have made my own calculation and I'm going to show you what stat you should get later on. For now, let's continue. And lastly, the Soul node. The skills on this node are similar to all three types of shadow equipment. So for me, this said nothing to the build. In a glance, the mass weapon will be using a lot of potion creating self buff skills that increase physical damage bonus, physical damage bonus reduction, life steal, and healing receive, and rely mostly on normal crit attack to deal damage. Next, let's look at the two handed axe shadow equipment. It has strength, INT, physical penetration, and haste. So this will be a haste penetration build. On bound, we have Midas touch, which increase the skill effect and zeny gain, and demonstration skill, increase the skill damage even more. On engrave, we have acid terror, increase the bleed status damage, and acid demonstration, which increase true damage and fire attribute physical damage. On validation, we have spore explosions, which increase the damage and explosion range. And thorn trap, deal extra fire damage to the surrounding targets after it is burned. And lastly, on contract, we have acid smoke, a 50% chance to inflict acidic smoke that deal physical damage to the target surrounding area, almost similar to the assassin in poison smoke, corrosion, reduce healing receive, fire upgrade, increase fire damage and kindle, fire attack deal extra fire damage for every seconds. So to take advantage of this extra skill effect on shadow equipment, the two-handed axe should be using more on the demonstration, acid terror and acid demonstration skills. Move on to the one-handed axe with shield shadow equipment. Similar to the two-handed axe, the one-handed axe also have strength, INT, physical penetration and has stat, indicating that it is also a has penetration build. On bound, we have card revolution which increases the skill damage and sphere mine increases the skill explosion damage. On engrave, we have bio cannibalize which increases the summon plant damage and card tornado increases the skill stun resist and also give additional true damage. On validation, we have hell plant which increases the hell plant damage and heavy cannon which also increases the skill damage. And on contract, we have loading capacity upgrade increase loading capacity for card cannon and heavy cannon breaking attack bio cannibalize and hell plant attack reduce the target physical damage reduction furious shooting heavy cannon attack aid extra fire damage and giant plant increase bio cannibalize and hell plant attack range and aid extra neutral physical damage so the one-handed axe will be specialized in plant summon and cannon attack now it become more obvious which skills are meant to be used for which weapon. The mass uses specified mass passive skills to further enhance the attack and resistance and rely mostly on normal at all crit attack with the chance to trigger the impulsive slash skill which will deal a AOE damage when dealing normal attack. The one-handed axe with shield get more benefit from using plant summon skill like bio cannibalize and hell plant for short range attack and using card and heavy cannon for a longer range attack. And lastly, the two-handed axe will benefit from throwing bottle skills like demonstration, acid terror, and acid demonstration skill to deal large area of fire AOE damage. Now, of course, the skills mentioned can also be used by the other type of weapon, but using the skills as according to the type of the shadow equipment will give you extra damage, extra buff, and extra status. Alright, so now we know how to play the alchemist. So, depending on the play style, you will want to get the corresponding skills that are mentioned just now. So so let's look at the skill set. What are the skills that the alchemist will have? Now for this part, I'm not going to separate and categorize the skill according to the type of weapon that it should be used on. Because in my opinion, the alchemist skills are not specific to any weapon type. Most of the skills can be used by all three weapons. And depends on the situation for PvP or PvE or instance run, you can interchange the skills. Alright, let's look at the alchemist skill. First, we have the X mastery skill. This skill increases the physical attack of all three types of weapon that scale with strength. Next, bio cannibalize skill. This skill summons a plant that attack its surrounding 3 meters targets. Now here is the part that confused a lot of players. The skill damage has two parts. The damage 
scale with physical attack and also the INT star. This damage formula is not just for the bio cannibalize skill. Most of the alchemist job branch skill have this formula in its skill damage calculation. The physical attack is increased by the strength stat, but the INT stat also add damage to the skill. So which stat will give more damage? Now I developed my own calculation to see what stat you should get. First, we need to know how many physical attack you can get from the strength stat. We know that for alchemist, one point of strength gives four points of physical attack, right? And due to the Odin bonus stat, every hundred points sequence of strength will increase additional 0.2 physical attack after that. So 0.2 on 100 points, 0.4 on 200 points and so on. So for 3000 strength, you will have around 365,800 physical attack. But of course, you actually get additional extra physical attack at every 100 points of strength. But I didn't factor that in in this calculation. But that is fine. It will not affect the calculation too much. So this is the strength part of the calculation. And next, we need the INT part. We just need the INT points up to 3000 and that's it. So let's take the bio cannibalize skill as an example. At max level, it deals 81% physical attack and 50 times INT. Put that numbers into the calculation spreadsheet that we just made. Put 81% at the box here and times that with our physical attack. And we will have the estimated damage from the physical attack part. And for the INT part, put 51 here at this box and times that with the INT point here. So this is the estimated damage that you will be dealing for the INT part. So now you can compare the damage between the physical attack that you get from the strength stat and the damage from the INT stat. With 100 points stat, the INT will deal more damage than 100 points of strength. How about if we have more points? Will the INT stat consistently give high damage? To know that, we simply just need to drag the formula down to end of the table for both columns. So everything is calculated easily. And now look at that. At 3000 points, the physical attack from the strength part will give much more damage than the INT stat. So here we can say that the INT stat will give less and less damage as you have more stat points. And the strength stat will progressively give more and more damage as you have higher strength points or physical attack. So how do you know at what point the strength physical attack damage will overtake the INT point damage? For that, we need to look at in between of the value. At 1800 points, the strength will start to deal the same damage as to the INT part. But we cannot base on the strength point to make this comparison because you may have higher physical attack from other stats like card deposit effect, upgrade awakening, refine awakening, and so on. So the right way to look at this table is to compare the damage based on the value of the physical attack, which is this one. Now this is the right relation for this comparison. At around 100,000 to 107,000 physical attack, bio cannibalized skill will start to deal more damage by increasing the strength stat. Increasing INT stat at this point will not give as much damage anymore. So, do you get it? At lower physical attack, the INT stat will make the skill deal a lot of damage. Once you reach about 100,000 physical attack, increasing the INT stat will not give you a lot of damage anymore. Instead, the skill damage improves more by adding more strength stat. Alright, I hope you understand so far what I'm saying. So now I'm going to use this same approach to determine the damage power of all of the skills. What stat will give more damage at lower and higher stat point? Moving on, let's look at the next skill, Sphere Mine. This skill summons Marine Sphere and it will explode after a few seconds dealing 280% physical damage and 17 times INT. So let's put that number in the table. 280 percent physical attack and 17 times INT. Clearly, this skill gets more damage from the strength part rather than the INT. Next, impulsive slash skill. This is one interesting skill. I'll show you why. So this skill is for mass type weapon. When dealing normal attack using mass, there's a 20% chance to deal impulsive slash skill. Dealing damage to enemies within 3 meters. This skill deals 50% physical attack and 400 times INT. Put that number 
into the table, the impulsive slash skill deal more damage with the INT stat. Now I actually had gone through each skill and put all of the physical attack and INT values and numbers one by one in the table that I made. And I found out that only this skill relies truly on INT stat. All of the other skills eventually at higher physical attack will get more damage from the strength stat. Alright, I want to stop the video here. I think that's too much information in one video. And as a learning process, I believe we should be taking information and digest it slowly like in the class, right? But I will make a second part of this video solely to go through all of the skills damage using the calculation template that I made. But I will link the calculation template at the pinned comment and video description so you can use it, calculate the damage yourself and have fun with it. As for the skill set, this is my take from what I see in the recommended start page. And shadow equipment, for PvP, you will want to use the summon plant skill like bio cannibalize and hell plant. And all of the cannon skill, card cannon and heavy cannon skill. For grinding, AFK farming or PvE, the game shows that the throwing bottle skills are most efficient. The demonstration skill, acid terror and acid demonstration skills. The homunculus skill, on the other hand, the way I see it, is just a supporting skill that eventually to be used as a sacrificial pet to add extra stats to your character once you reach genetic and have the life fusion skill. Talk more on all of the skills at the next part of this video. Alright, that's it for this video. This time video shout out goes to... Thank you for always supporting me and this channel. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you will be notified whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. And as always, happy playing. Bye-bye.